Now imagine how you would feel if you go to a competition and they tell you, you play one time, that's the end, whatever, if your score stands, you win, if somebody takes it down, you lose, so on and so forth. So guess what the Happy Kleenex did? They were done, right? They weren't playing anymore tonight, competitive-wise, so they all went and did what you should do in the casino. They started to have some fun, and they started to drink. And I don't mean drink a little bit. Even in the, in the interview you hear that I do with them, the lead singer even said, we started to drink a lot. So by the time Christina or Elizabeth or whoever broke the news to them, they were already tipsy if not drunk. Okay, So they had to go back. Drunk, they still pulled a 1 million 6 score. Let me give you what I think really went down. I think, for one, and I'm not trying to make fun of any band, you know, as a, as a reviewer and as a journalist, we're supposed to call this as we see it. So I'm going to call this as I saw it. I think that this particular band that complained was the absolute worst band there that night. They were upset because Happy Kleenex are not Californians. Happy Kleenex came from Phoenix, Arizona in order to do this contest. From what I heard from them, I think you could sign up online. I think they talked to whoever they needed to talk to. Let them know that they couldn't drive down every night, you know, to come from Phoenix to come down every Friday night from March. They were excused that and they just said, show up, okay? So because this band had been there every night or every Friday night in March and they played and they had fans, they walked in expecting that they were going to win this thing. I don't know if they expected to win this thing on skill or I don't know if they expected to win this thing by somebody saying, you've been here, we're going to give it to you, but they were mad. They also pitched the fit that this band came from Phoenix, Arizona. Why? I don't know. But the Harris Rincon um, in actually a city called Valley City, it's not actually San Diego, it's in Valley City, is the closest place that they can go to compete. It's open to anybody. So if you're willing to put in the drive, which I think Arizona from California here is about a five, six hour drive, so be it. Well... After the Happy Kleenex, I, I think what they wanted to do is they wanted to shake their resolve and they wanted to, they knew these guys were drinking. I don't think they was worried about any other band because let's just get this out the way. If you're in a competition and somebody posts a mean eight score off the bat, that's a tough score to beat, especially on give it away. So now what, what are you thinking as a band? Somehow we got to squeeze out a million, I think they had like a million eight, Something. I can't remember what it was. Things like one million eight three something, okay? But anyway, you're thinking I gotta pull at least a million nine to be safe. How do you pull a million nine? Either you go and you full FC the thing and get the full amount of points you can get, or you follow or try to follow a different overdrive path, or you try to get all four of you to activate at the exact same time, okay? I think they wanted to shake these guys. They didn't know these guys were drunk. I think they, they thought that they had a, if they complained that MTV would be started to be fair, which they did. And I think that they think that they would take this whole thing. Well, here's just my opinion. I, I, even, I, I don't know. The Happy Cleaners was a good band. There was several other bands there that was also good. No Fail Mode was also turned on, okay? They just want you to get the highest score so they can find out who the best band is. But I'm going to tell you this right now. In performance number one of the band that was doing all the complaining, if no fail mode would not have been on and if the rules of the contest was if you fail, you're done, they would have been done because the singer failed out in the chorus of Down With The Sickness. He was off beat. David Draymond was singing at this pace, which is what the pace of the song is. And he was singing at this pace. I mean, the chorus was totally rushed. Uh, he did find up to the chorus, but the chorus killed him. So he would have bottomed out anyways, okay? But long story short, the Happy Cleaners ends up cleaning up this whole entire competition. From Phoenix, Arizona, they drove down. They took the competition by storm. Nobody at all could shake their scores. I think they would have had a little bit more competition if the other bands that were there, but some of the other bands were pretty decent and pretty good, if they would have chosen the songs <clears throat> that would have given them the most points out of the whole situation. If you want to, really want to know the truth, I think everybody was a little shook after they told it they had to go again, because if you 
the the footage I have is of the first round uh, of the, the, the first uh, time I'm on stage. I was asked by one or two bands not to show the second footage because everybody had been drinking and everybody had been, you know, they were done. And I agreed to that. I said, I will, I will only show the first footage. And I can't do that for one band and not do it for the other ones. But the first time it was up was everybody's best shot. Okay. So I think if the bands would have concentrated on more of the songs that they were picking, like I said, there's a, tr a strategy to this. It's the, the songs you pick, you need to know what songs is going to yield you the most points. Me and Miguel talked about this at length the other night and no I'm not going to tell anybody his strategy because he's competing but we discuss songs and we discuss what bands need to do to be able to walk in and take out the band that they know that they may not be able to beat and you know what you what you got to practice on and things of that nature so and that's what these guys did these guys hammered you know uh, give it away forever and they all full combo this song but the problem is is when you get to these competitions the word lag needs jumps in, or we let's just call it bad calibration. Okay, I can firsthand tell you that nobody calibrated anything that night. There's a certain guy that's over setting it up and getting it all ready. Nobody calibrated anything. I was there from the time that the curtains opened and the whole nine setting up, and nobody calibrated. So, yes, calibration, and I think all of these tournaments, not just this one, is pretty much off unless somebody really complains. The things you should be complaining about, nobody complained about. They're complaining about drumsticks. Why not complain? Because I believe that I saw, at least in my own two eyes, I think that the, even the drummer from the Happy Kleenex had his own drum throne. And I think that because I seen him pick up the drum throne after it was all over and, and came off the stage. Why didn't you complain about what he was sitting on? Okay. All in all, though, it was a wonderful competition. I'm very happy for the Happy Kleenex. There's going to be an interview that is going to pop up here shortly after probably this video comes up with them. Um, I'm going to put a little video in front of that because the place we were in, the Oasis room, was kind of small. I had to get everybody on the stage. We had the backdrop, but I was limited to where I could shoot at. I could only shoot in the Oasis room or the Oasis lounge where the contest was. So I didn't have free reign of the of the casino, which I would have totally taken them someplace else because it was very noisy still in the area that we was at. Um, and the space is limited. So my camera wasn't wide enough to get all of us. So I do a little thing in the beginning and then you'll see me not on camera. You see all these guys, uh, not the world's greatest interview, but I wanted to get the interview with these guys and get it to you. Hopefully everybody can hear it. Okay. Um, in the casino, you can't just go shooting at free will because of the fact that there is, um, policies about that. People feel that you can cheat if you're shooting machines or if you're taking, uh, you can't have, unsolicited photos of people and they appear on websites and things of this nature. So I had to have um, my buddy Elizabeth, who was my contact, hang with me the whole time. They had to make sure that I was doing what I was supposed to do and not shooting elsewhere, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed the interview, but I had a blast. Uh, and if there's every opportunity to go back to either one of these, maybe Vegas, uh, I'll get there. Um, but uh, if the opportunity doesn't come up, I had a blast there. Uh, all the bands, like I said, was great. They all came and gave it their all. They all did what they needed to do. MTV, Christina showed up. She was great. Uh, she knew who Rod Gamer was. I think she was shocked because she didn't know that Rod Gamer actually had a California affiliate out here. Um, she's used to the New York side where um, one of the two offices for Rod Gamer now sits. So that's my, my little report on that. There's going to be a blog that I'm going to have more pictures that's going to be loaded up there. Um, there's a lot of things to be going on today, but I'm trying to get sooner or later you will get a video montage of some of the pictures that I took. They're all of bands. Um, I didn't get a chance to do pictures with all the individual bands because it was kind of like go on stage, get off. So it was kind of like you didn't have any chance to maneuver. I did get a photo with the winning band, which you'll see that. Um, just wanted to give you guys a glimpse on the inside if you've never been participating in one of what one of these looks like. Okay. Um, the other thing before, you know, I know I'm going to get asked why this was, I don't know, but no, the Ion drum kit was not used. Uh, I have been told by Miguel that I think in AC, which is Atlantic City, they are using the Ion drum rocker, but for whatever reason, uh, Harris Rincon did not have the Ion drum rocker, which I was, I was pretty shocked. I thought that every venue was going to have one of those uh, because, it, you know, as accurate as it is and it gets the Ion name out there, but they didn't have that, so... All right, so that was my little 
trip to Paris Rincon. I really enjoyed it. Me and my wife would be going back there because uh, I just found out she never really been in the big casino. She just told me this after almost seven years of marriage because she always told me that she's went to casinos. But when we walked in there, she was like a deer in the head, like, oh, I've never been here before. So she had fun playing the slots. We're going to go back because I like the hospitality of, of the hotel and casino and have some fun. All right, so <clears throat> that's it. Leave your thoughts and your comments, what you guys think about this. And uh, we're going to catch you guys on the next review.